Five color bring to light deck. Now, one thing that Jerry did write about this week when he wrote about this deck, and as we know now for some time now, Jerry makes what he's playing very public. He is not in love with his red matchup, and I wouldn't be in love with this matchup here at all. Well, he's got a lot of good action in the sideboard. So Jerry is taking the matchup seriously. But game one, he is in a big hole. Important for him that he's won the die roll here because being on the draw game one uh, is very bad for him. Lumbering Falls is where Thompson's going to start his day. For DeMars, it's a mountain and a monastery Swiss beer. Round number 10 underway here from Indianapolis. Thompson knows what he's up against right away now. Going to be getting the beatdowns on. I'm sure he was, since Jerry was near the top tables, I'm sure these players know what each other is playing at this point. Both have a lot of tournament experience, obviously. Yeah. A polluted Delta likely to search for a basic here. And a Jace. There is a basic swamp for Thompson. Looking to get that five-color mana base online. We've seen him do it pretty effortlessly in the matches we've watched him play. And uh, Thompson definitely picks his spots here to try to get basic lands out to make sure the battle lands are coming into play untapped down the line. So it's, a, it's an odd dance you need to do. You would like to get as many colors online as soon as possible, but because of the claws on the battle lands, you also want to fetch basics periodically to make sure that your future battle lands are coming to play untapped. Well, we'll see what's next here for DeMars on his second turn of the game. Jay's a great start here for Thompson. He does have a little bit of cheap removal, a card like Reeve Soul in his main deck, but didn't have it that turn for the Swift Spear. You have two copies of Reeve Soul, four copies of Abzan Charm, one copy of Soul Tide Charm, one Ruinous Path, one Under End, one Languish. It's another Swift Spear here for Demars. And he will attack. Now, if Demars had Wild Slash, I think he would have cast it. Now, it could be Titan Strength here, however, and it is. Right. And Titan Strength is excellent here for Demars. He can actually use it on the unblocked. Swiss beer and get a prowess trigger on the blot one to take care of Jace. Can't forget about the scry as well. Oh yeah, lots of like. Yeah, top card going to go to the bottom there. Jace is going to hit the graveyard. Thompson also going to take five points of damage. It's a solid turn there for Demars. Titan Strain is also it's very good. There's just not that much cheap removal floating around. And so, you know, the scenarios where you're getting blown out with Titan Strength, where your opponent has a removal spell in response, harder to do in this format because people are just not casting a whole bunch of cheap removal spells. Languish the draw there for Thompson. He's got a polluted delta and he'll pass the turn back. Sultai Charm actually at the ready as well. So, not a bad start here for Thompson. One of the things about these red decks, keep in mind, is that the burnout plan, a lot harder to do for them. They don't have as much burn as they used to. Yeah, you are without Stoke the Flames. You uh, are without Lightning Strike. But a Targa's Command, especially alongside creatures, can easily burn someone out. Demars with an Atarkus Command in hand right now. Also a copy of Zergo Bell Striker, a Windswept Heath, and a Cinderglade, which will be the land it appears he's going to play. The new battle land from Battle of Zendikar, providing green mana. And now here is Atarkus Command. Looking to be a huge punch here. Yeah, this is worth seven damage. <laughs> Atarkus Command is just really, really powerful. <laughs> No two ways about it. Thompson going to sacrifice that polluted delta. But Soul Tide Charm here is a, a fine response. Not, get, un, not unhappy. Yeah, he can get an island here. I think DeMars' move here might have been prompted by, well, Thompson cannot cast Obzon Charm in this spot because he doesn't have access to untapped white mana from the polluted delta. So Soul Tide Charm is very good for Thompson to have here. You know, if I'm DeMars in that situation, I'm probably just saying, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, can't be too bad. If you have a removal spell, that's fine. There is a Salt Eye Charm. I still get to deal with quite a few points of damage to you. So Salt Eye Charm will take care of the Swift Spear. The other Swift Spear will get to come through. Here's Zergo. And now we're going to go back Thompson's way, who's going to quickly untap, take a draw step. He's got a Flooded Strand in hand. Just drew a copy of Polluted Delta. But the thing about Thompson's mana base, especially in matchups like this, yes, the red decks can't burn you out as well as they used to, but Jerry does deal himself quite a few points of damage with these fetch lands. Yeah, the, the mana bases on the five-color and four-color decks of the format has gotten a lot away from the three-color comes in the tap lands from Konzatark here, and now is much more fetch land oriented, and you do take extra points here and there. Smoldering Marsh searched up via Polluted Delta. There's a language to clear everything away, but Thompson's already down to five. Demars picked up a copy of Lightning Berserker. Ooh. And this was a card that Demars was complaining about to me. He said that Lightning Berserker has been pretty poor for him thus far. Not in this spot. This is about as good as it's going to get. For Lightning Berserker, the highs are high, the lows are pretty low. Yep. And this is definitely a high high right now. Much better than Hangerback Walker would be in the, in the same spot. Absolutely. 
Cinderglade going to be searched up via Windswept Heath. We might see a Dash Berserker here, plus a couple of pumps. He's also got a copy of Abbott of Carol Keep in hand, so the options are pretty good here for Brian. And Jerry cannot even fetch for a duel into Cast Siege right now, worried to have it in his hand, because this is going to knock him down to one. Yeah. Dash hit you for four, put you down to one. The draw is a copy of Bring the Light. Jerry has a Flooded Strand in hand, which he cannot break now. So he's going to have to draw a land au naturel. Yeah. There is Flooded Strand. Pass the turn back. How many fetch lands are in Jerry's deck, that you, are you, do you ask? I think it's 13. A, a modern-esque 14. Mm. <laughs> There's the Berserker again. Beatdowns. Is there a removal spell here for Thompson? There is with Murderous Cut. He'll pay four, delve one. That'll satisfy the cost. Demar's follow-up. He's got an Abbott. We'll take a look at the top card. It's a Titan Strength. Might want to cast that. Get a little scry on. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Can't take it with you. Yeah. Not the prettiest thing I've ever seen, but... Dragon Fodder on top of the deck. There might be some interest in keeping that, but Demar's will shift that to the bottom. He'll pass the turn back with a Lethal Threat on the table. Thompson looking for a land. He's got Bring the Light in hand that could find a Siege Rhino. He's also just drawn Siege Rhino, which he cannot cast again. Oh, terribly awkward, and now he has to concede <laughs> the game. So, Brian Demar is going to win game number one here over Jerry Thompson. Atarka Red up a game here over Five Color Bring the Light. Now, we had a feeling game one would probably go to Demar's. The matchup is just pretty good for him game one, but Thompson does have some good cards in his sideboard. Yeah, two copies of Duress, three Radiant Flames, two to Staple Stroke, two in case night, uh, Slumgar's Command, a Slumgar of the Drifting Death, a Radiant Purge, and an Offense of the Foremost, two copies of Obnixilus Reignited. So the two copies of Duress, the three copies of Radiant Flames, and the two in case night, Great place to start here. There's a lot of spells in the Atarka Red deck, uh, most notably Atarka's Command. So Duress is solid against them, even though it's a creature beatdown deck. Radiant Flames and Encase and Ice are, of course, great here. And when Jerry played in a similar matchup yesterday, he did bring in his copy of Anafenza just as a quality blocker early on in the game. On the other side of things here for Demars, four Hanger Backwalkers, two Thunderbreak Regions, two copies of Roast, three Arc Lightning, two Fire Impulse, and two Goblin Heel Cutter. We may, we've seen Demars make this swap a lot when he's playing in these kind of matchups where he's cutting a lot of the pump spells, anticipating more removal spells and sweepers out of his opponent, and becoming more of just a normal red beatdown deck. So I think the Hanger Backwalkers, the Thunderbreak Regions, and the Heel Cutters will be coming into that end, and it's possibly two, couple, two copies of Roast will also come in as a way to handle Siege Rhinos and early Jaces. I like the, sh the switch that Demars can make up for Cyborg quite a bit. I like it a lot, too, because the whole Titan Strength, Teamer Battle Rage become a men's game plan, much harder to do against opponents who are going to be loading up on removal spells. I think it's still fine to leave in a little bit of the pump action, but he's playing with a 10 copies of these cards in the main deck, and that's just too many. On top of that, he's got four copies of Wild Slash in his deck. It's not the end of the world because Thompson has Jace, but Wild Slash on the balance is pretty inefficient against a five-color lots of raw power kind of deck. So Demars has a lot of cards he wants to cut in these kind of matchups, and he has a lot of cards he can bring in. Well, those are the options there for both players, and they will be underway here in just a moment. Thompson will be on the play. In the meantime, we will talk about SCG Game Night, the very popular promotion where we've got our Hippo available starting this month. Absolutely, and stores can sign up for Game Night and then run it however they want to any day of the week, sanctioned or unsanctioned. Just get players in your store for some fun and friendly magic. we got the rest of the year's kits announced here. November will be the Otter, and if you want to get signed up for December, which is the Reindeer, head over to StarCityGames.com slash Game Night for more information or contact your StarCity Games in-store play representative. Now, do keep it mind as we make our way through day number two here. Nick Miller will be doing a metagame breakdown for you. So I know that's of interest to quite a few people. We've got over 90 players here in day number two. We want to know exactly what everyone's up to as far as decks are concerned. Know that Atarka Red is popular this weekend as is Red Green Landfall, Bring the Light decks, and those Obzon decks. But what else are people working with in day number two? We will be finding out soon enough. And how do we define these decks as well? That's Very gonna be, hard. Going to be complicated. There's a lot of mishmash of three and four color decks, five color bring to light decks that are all over the place. Some blue control decks out there with dig through time, but defining these decks, it'll be difficult to do at the beginning of the format. Yeah, there's a lot of soupiness. People are playing decks that are, appear to be piles of cards that I like. So defining the decks is a little complicated. Well, I don't envy Nick's job this morning. No, I do not either. Might take us a little longer than usual to get that metagame breakdown. But that's why he gets paid the big bucks. Exactly. He'll, he'll get it done. Yeah. It's just going to take a little while. Both of these players, former Grand Prix champions, DeMar's won Grand Prix title to his name. 
Grand Prix Boston Worcester back in 2012 for Thompson. Two Grand Prix titles to his name and quite a few Grand Prix top eights as well. Also has a Pro Tour top eight. Can't forget about that. A ton of Invitational top eights. Yes. Most Invitational top eights, I think, of all time. Two Invitational wins. He was the only one to have that for a while until Tom Ross went back-to-back -back last year. And he is still the only player to win back-to-back -back Opens in one weekend, back when you could win at two Opens in one weekend on the Open Series circuit. Yes, for those of you who are relatively new to the Open ser Series watching this uh, broadcast here, a couple years ago, it used to be Saturday there would be an Open, and then Sunday there would be an Open. Thompson's the only one to win the same, uh, in the same weekend win both Opens. And as long as we are in this two-day structure, that record's not going anywhere. He was threatened in a big way by Ross Merriam last year. Tyler Wilkerson as well. Yes. I had some people running him down, but ultimately it's only Thompson. Well, with a top eight at Pro Tour gate crash, six invitational top eights, Grand Prix top eights, including wins at Denver and Nashville. A very accomplished player. Took a little break to do some mm -hmm. work with Wizards of the Coast, but he's back where he belongs now. Uh, Going to do a, a little sidetrack here and... For, just to clarify, DeMars is a friend of mine. like the guy a lot. Yeah. You're allowed one pile shuffle in a match. It's oh! When you, it's when you sit down to confirm how many cards are in your deck or to confirm how many cards are in your opponent's deck. If you just kind of pile shuffle mid-shuffle to, like, shake up the way you're shuffling, you're wasting people's time. Knock it off. Get that out of your game, people at your local store. So you wouldn't like playing against me, then? No. I love a pile shuffle. I like a pile, pile just to confirm contents. It just feels good. Just feels good. Demars may have been doing that in fairness. He was just sideboarding. He may have just confirmed that there were 60 there. But less piling is better. Patrick taking a stance here on the pile shuffle. Jerry going to cast a duress. Titan strength to Atarkas command, along with the Thunderbreak region, a Zergo, and two fetch lands, Bloodstained Mire and Wooded Foothills. For you kids at home, pile shuffle as much as you want. Live your dream. Uh, I don't mind pile shuffling when you know you're at your house by yourself and no one's <laughs> no one else's time is a factor. Do whatever you want. That's a good that's a good place to be pile shuffling. Demar is going to sacrifice Bloodstain Meyer. Mountain plus Zergo on the way. And we'll see if Thompson can keep up because, as you did mention, a lot better after sideboard for this matchup. Yeah, and Radiant Flames is a big deal too. Uh, that's the best card he's bringing to the table, and Casey Nice is also great. The duresses are not spectacular, but it's just important for Thompson to be able to deploy the cards in his hand, so anything he can play early that trades with the card into Mars's hand is valuable. Pluto Delta the draw there for Thompson. Now he's got to play the dance with the lands. Basics, non-basics, what to get. DeMars, in the meantime, a little bit simpler and straightforward. He'll draw a card for now. Remember, he does have a Tarkus command in hand. He lost one of them to a Duress. Thunderbreak region is something for him to work towards, and he drew Abbott of Carol Keep last turn. Swift Spear was the draw this turn. Well, Swiss Spear seems better to me than playing an Abbott with no hope of revealing anything. Yep. The question is, does DeMars go ahead and just try to cast the Titan Strength this That turn? is a question. Looks like we are finding our answer. Uh, I personally would cast the Titan Strength. The curve in DeMars' hand is pretty tight. It's got a lot to do with his mana for the next couple turns. And... In the new standard format, there's just not a lot of kill that can happen in this spot for two mana. You're basically looking at ultimate price. That's a main one, and that one's not really around very much. Right. I think this is a good. That's a good risk. It looks bad if Thompson has a removal spell, but it's it's unlikely in this spot. Top card of the deck's a nice one there for Brian as well. It's a copy of Cinderglade. I think some of the hesitance there. Some of the hesitance was didn't want to sacrifice that foothills, not be able to search up green mana. Mm -hmm. But now that he's got a Cinderglade on top of the deck, life is pretty good. That's also land number three, getting closer to Thunderbreak region. Thompson going to sacrifice that polluted delta, go a little bit lower here. And he's going to go with a lot of choices, of course. Smoldering Marsh. 
Looks like he might be working his way towards Radiant Flames. It would make sense. If he's getting, uh, you know, a red-black dual land here when he already has a Swamp, I would imagine that he's trying to get to... If he doesn't have Radiant Flames, he's at least giving himself the opportunity to draw and cast it. Blue to Delta the draw. Here's another copy of Duress. That Tarkus command's got to bite the dust, of course. It's going to leave Demars with a Abbott and a Thunderbreak Regent. And we know what Demars is drawing. Thompson with a basic forest past the turn back. So Demars is going to draw that Cinderglade. Here's Abbott. Let's take a look at the top card. Titan Strength is pretty nice. Yeah, this is, this is a great turn here for Demars. Here come the beatdowns. There comes the Titan, Titan Strength. However, Thompson with a murderous cut, that's pretty big there. Yeah, big deal. But that would have happened anyway. The Titan Strength was essentially free, and DeBars even gets a prowess trigger for his trouble. So that's not a blowout per se, but very good for Thompson to have a removal spell. Pluted Delta. One thing we haven't seen from Thompson yet, though, is Siege Rhino. No Radiant Flames here either. DeMars picked up a copy of Lightning oh, Berserker. Beautiful. It's time to dash and bash. Pump up the jam. And this Lightning Berserker is also just great against the potential Radiant Flames as well. Thompson going to sacrifice a fetch land. He's got two basics, so he can get a little funky here with what he searches up. There's a Prairie Stream. Yeah, not surprising for him to get the two colors of mana he's missing. Now he can cast essentially everything in his deck. He's got Siege Rhino Mana, Radiant Flames is unlocked. He can cast either Charm. Well, he's definitely got a spell to play here. Let's see what it is. It's Murderous Cut again. And he's getting rid of the Lightning Berserker in part because he still wants Radiant Flames to be a knockout draw. Yep. And so he has to get rid of the Dash creature. He falls to six. Time to draw. Radiant Flames, I believe, was the draw. So that'll clear away the creatures. Polluted Delta went on the battlefield. We're going to head back to Mars' way. He's just got a Thunderbreak region land off the top. There's the dragon. Now Thompson has a dragon in his hand. And now he's got two fetch lands. So he's going to sacrifice that. Go down to four. Not the most comfortable life total. No. But it is what it is. So no copies have stoked the flames. Yep. Noakes was at Firecrafts in Brian's deck list. He doesn't have a lot of reach. Yeah, Tarkus Command, not lethal. So Thompson's going to search up two lands, and we're going to have Salumgar here in just a moment. Canopy Vista and Sunken Hollow. Mana's online. Salumgar's the last card. Great blocker right now. 3-7. Demars will draw. Chandra is pretty good. Not bad. These two are going back and forth. Jerry's going to try to keep up with that now. Well, he's going to need a good top deck, though. Yeah, but, well, uh, you know, he, he needs a removal spell for Chandra. Yeah. Because if he takes even one point of damage, that means he can't target Thunderbreak region for the rest of the game. He's looking for a card like Languish here would be fantastic. Bring the Light would be as well. Siege Rhino even pretty good. Utter End will work just fine. Yeah, but, you know, that's... Uh, Thompson needed a draw. That's the floor of the draw he needed. Yep. That'll play. Back and forth we go. Demars has drawn a land. Thompson, he's drawn a Siege Rhino. Yes, sir. Up to seven goes Jerry. We're going to see who can top deck better now. Jerry's definitely got the more powerful draws. Oh, for sure. Because his deck has the more powerful cards. This is not the time for Demars to be flooding as he's going to play a Cinderglade and pass the turn back. Didn't get a great look at Thompson's draw step, but he might be able to get on the aggressive now. So he's got to kind of weigh this delicate balance of, I might need to play a little bit of defense because if a card like Lightning Berserker comes rolling off the top, but he's coming into the red zone. At seven, I think he's safe enough to attack with the Siege Rhino. Charge with a draw again. Demars with the windswept teeth in hand. Pass the turn back over to Thompson. Thompson will draw. Does he have a card like Bring the Lightning's deck after sideboard? Again, Languish would be a backbreaker right now. He'd kill all Demars' stuff and would leave himself with plenty.
Looks like Rhino's coming in. Double block. You wanted the double block? I kind of do. Yeah? I don't think DeMars can beat a removal spell. Anyway. Fair? We got five mana now. Bring the light's a big draw. We might have Languish now. Yeah. And with Languish, again, clears away DeMars' stuff, leaves Thompson's stuff, and Thompson can present lethal next turn. Yeah, this is, uh, this is perfect. Again, Thompson had the more powerful draws. DeMars had the ability to end the game immediately. And Thompson actually going to search for it. Looks like Nissa, perhaps. Yep, get a basic forest. Play that. Flip Nissa. Maybe a little surprising to see that. Um, hmm. Let me see here. I don't know. This isn't the. I mean, he's still got two blockers against two attackers. I assume Languish is still in the deck. I figured. I found a little surprised. I'm a little surprised by this. Okay, never okay, mind. All right. Yeah, this is great. Then. Yeah, never mind. Resoul. I was about to say, he's taking a slight less risk by leaving Chandra in play, but if he had a removal spell to back it all up, this is a great setup. Makes a lot more sense as Demar is going to concede the game now. So Jerry Thompson is going to win game number two here over Brian Demar. Five color bring the light and the Tarka Red getting ready here for game number three. As I said, Demar's can't beat a removal spell anyway. So <laughs> You're I, would not wrong. Double, I would have double blocked. Yep. You are not wrong about that. Well, these players are getting ready here for game number three. Some back and forth action here, but if you're if you're rooting for a target red and Brian DeMars right now, the notable thing here is game three after sideboard on the play. And if you're rooting for Jerry, something to take away is his sideboard cards definitely matter. They, they came up, they were powerful, the duresses and the Radiant Flames especially. Yeah, the, all those cards are great. Yep. yep. The, the important thing about sideboard cards, and I, I feel like I've said this before, and we'll probably say it again, when you draw them, do they have an impact? That game, the answer, absolutely. Yes, and this is now DeMars' second pile. Oh, of boy. The, so we're confir it's confirmed that it's no longer just to confirm 60 cards. Well, we better talk about something right now because I know you can't watch this, so we'll talk about the Star City Games newsletter to cut away from DeMars' pile shuffling. It's your source for Magic the Gathering news. Best of all, it's pretty easy to sign up for. Absolutely. You can head over to starcitygames.com slash newsletter. Get signed up right now. All the going-ons of Star City Games, both the Open Series with a summary of what happened in last week's events, plus a match of the week. A lot of content from the website, including exclusive deck lists and advice from some of our premium columnists, an exclusive Cardboard Crack comic, and best of all, sign up is free. Again, StarCityGames.com slash newsletter. Get signed up today. There's that F word. Free. Free as can be. Let's see if you're ready here for game number three. Brian DeMars. Looks like he's done pile shuffling. Well, he's sideboarding right now. We don't oh, okay, so we might, get, we might get another one there. That's all right. Put you on screaming tilt this morning. That'll be fantastic. Both these players playing unique decks that are definitely going to shape, I think, what we see for Atlanta next week. Absolutely. Potentially I mean, I, the Pro Tour as well. Th th this, to me, these are, are the two starting kind of new pillars of the format. Yeah. People are going to be playing and testing a lot, not necessarily these exact 75s, but the concepts of these two lists. Can you play an aggressive red deck backed up by a Tarkus Command? Can you play a five-color controllish deck with, with Bring to Light, giving you a lot of flexibility and utility? Both these decks, I, I, I really like what Brian's doing this week. I really do. I, I have from the start. Uh, I don't know if he's going to board back into those pump spells, team or battle rages, things of that nature or not. We'll see. And, you know, the, cus the, the ability to customize the Bring the Light deck that Thompson's playing, I, I like a lot of the slots that he has here. I haven't really seen anything that he's drawn where I'm like, I don't know about that. Right. Game one, I mean, all of the, all the targets are, uh, they're not super situational. And, you know, like you draw a Siege Rhino, that's going to be fine. You draw a Ruinous Path or an Utter End. That's going to be fine. And they're also just good things to be able to tutor for. Don't forget either, Jerry Thompson, when he did win Grand Prix Denver, yep. did it with a five-color deck. Mm. You know, the five-color, it was the Vivid format. Yeah. How many, many moons ago, I believe it was block instructed if memory serves. But he, he was doing it then. So this is actually very familiar territory for him, playing this style of deck and being able to figure out what my mana needs to look like, what I need to search for, and just how greedy I can get with my spells. But the mana base is very different this time than the Vivid Land. Oh, yeah. Much different construction, and, and what you can do with it I don't think is nearly as extreme as you could during Lorwyn Block, but a lot of the same principles still apply. Like, for me, this, I would not have built a deck like this. Yeah. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. It is not how my brain works. It, you know, I'm more on the Atarka Red side of things. I can figure out how to tune a beatdown deck. This five-color thing, I would have the wrong cards. Yeah, I'd have the wrong mana, I'd have the wrong cards, I'd have the wrong sideboard cards, be fetching my lands in the wrong order. I'd want a five-color card in there that I... There's some five-color card I'm sure that's legal that I'd want in my deck that's nonsensical. 
Probably try to slide a Nephilim in there. Yeah. Whatever. Sliver Hive Lord. Hey, see, there you go. Give me one of those. Damar's going to take a mulligan here. Which means... <laughs> which means... Another pile shuffle just for you. Here's the thing. There's only one confirmed finite resource that human beings have. There's okay. only one. It's time. Yes. It's the only thing we know that you have a limited amount of. Yep. You're getting a, you're getting a little less right now. Yeah, we all are. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> is. Tom Ross, by the way, he's playing in day two of competition. He was seven and two coming in. He just lost his match. He was our backup match this round. So. Actually, excuse me. He was he was five, he was six and three coming in. Yeah, so six round. and four. So he was now, six and four. Now dropping. Yeah, yeah. I got off to a good start, but did not have a good back end of day one. Lost to Jesse Hefner, and those two have actually played against each other in the season one Invitational top eight last year, where Hefner got second place. Lost in the finals to the Swan Token, mm -hmm. Derek Sheets. Demar is going to take a look at six cards now. Don't forget, he does get to scry. Vancouver Mulligan rule is in effect. Thompson waiting patiently. Down he goes. Nope, he's going to keep, and now he's going to scry. Top card's going to go to the bottom, and it was a land. Yeah, and I think his hand's a little on the land-heavy side, so that's a very good scry there for Demars. Bloodstained Mire to start. Thompson's first draw is a flooded strand. Yeah, DeMars does look a little bit mana heavy with a Thunderbreak region. I think his hand is Land's Titan Strength Thunderbreak region. Not the best I've ever seen, but we're going to find out right now, aren't we? And you nailed it. Thompson going to search for a basic swamp with the Polluted Delta. Go down to 19. Titan Strength going to bite the dust, going to leave DeMars with a bunch of lands and a Thunderbreak region. We'll see if Demars can find something like an Abbot, Creature, what have you. Plenty of good draws here available for Brian. Yeah, but this is the risk of playing these pump spell centric decks is, you know, when you mulligan, when your opponent's attacking with removal spells, uh, a lot of your draw steps are pretty bad. Bloodstained Mire number two. Sack them both, go down to 18. He might have a Zergo here, perhaps. We'll get a better look here in just a moment. Keep in mind, DeMars has other fetches in his hand. So being able to search up Cinderglade and green mana, that's all easy breezy mm -hmm. now. And it will be a Zergo that's going to be dashed. So in for two. Pass that turn back. I actually like the dash this turn. Yeah, I'm fine with it. DeMars can actually, you know, stop himself from having his creature killed by Reeve Soul, for example. On top of that, it's not like he's got anything else to do with it. It's being the next turn. Yeah. There's some draws that can make this look bad. But on the whole, I actually kind of like that play as he's going to sacrifice now Windswept Teeth. I think we'll see a Cinderglade here in just a moment. Thompson shuffling his deck from searching up a island with the Flooded Strand to cast a Jace. Mars with Zergo yet again. Looks like Thompson has no interest in blocking. Zergo dash also does some work to play around a Jace Fern's prodigy that flips. Very true. Thompson out of 14 at this point. However, he's got an active Jace, and it's time for that thing to get to work. Really good in these Bring the Light decks. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think... Something that's also going to be working in Jace's favor is there's just less red removal now yep. floating around the format. Just Wild Slash. Before you were playing against these red decks, and e even if they weren't leaving in Wild Slash, just as part of their burnout plan, they would be leaving in Lightning Strikes. Your Jace just never survived. So it says nothing of Searing Blood, and if that came up. Now, there, there's not that much efficient removal that handles Jace, even in the red decks. Nissa is here. It'll search of a basic forest. Thompson down to 13 at this point, but he's got a pretty nice board. Now we just have to see if he can beat the Thunderbreak region. That's in Brian's hand. Not a good sign for Demars to be this behind on the board already. Thompson going to activate Jace. There are four cards in the graveyard. About to make it five. 
Reeves Soul gone. That means the Zergo play was very nice there for Brian. Jace starts at five, up to six, and over to DeMars we go. Wooded Foothills, the draw. Here's Thunderbreak region. We'll find out soon enough if Thompson has an answer as he untaps. One thing you don't really want to be doing is targeting Thunderbreak region with Jace. No, not really. Not great. Not great savings. I've seen better plays. Thompson with the forest. In case and ice will help to get the job done. There will right. be a trigger there. In case and ice is good enough. Yep. Looks like the three damage is going to go to Thompson. Could choose to go to Jace. Thompson going to scale down the Jace to flash back the duress, get an idea of what DeMars is working with, which is lands and a Zergo. So not very much right now for Brian. Yeah, kept the land heavy hand there. That It looked like he was on the verge of mulliganing down to five and has not drawn that well since. Yep. See what's next year for Brian. He's in some real trouble. Even though Thompson's already down to 10 again, this particular build, not a lot of burn. No. 10's not, uh, 10's a pretty safe life total. Here comes Ergo. Here come the beatdowns. Does Thompson want to try to trade with that Nissa? There's a block. Team of Battle Rage. Ferocious has been engaged. It's a little double strike action there. And it also has trample. So it got a little bit of, yeah, a little work done. Worth some points. There's a planes. We're going to bring some things to light now. Might be time for a siege rhino. Yeah, and DeMar's just immediately Go. reaching for the life toll. He knows what's coming. Yep. Quite the stabilizer. There is a Rhino. Life totals will change here. Jace will move up. Thompson's starting to really flex his muscles with this deck. A mountain the draw there for DeMars. He'll sacrifice that wooded foothills. I don't know if Zergo's going to be dashing anymore. No, I, it's, I think his dashing days are over. Yeah, hang tight. Had some good years, you know? It wasn't bad. Had a good run. More than most of us can hope for, you know? It's but time, time to flash back, bring so the light. It's all over Yeah, for Zergo. This is the part that's... This is, this is where Jerry's deck gets tough to beat. When you get to cast bring the light two turns in a row, off of just drawing one copy, this is where life gets hard. 16 J to 10 now. Jace is just still the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> that has not changed. Nope. So, and, and if anything, it's gotten better. Rhino going to come crashing in. Damar's going to fall down to six. Shambling Vent is the land for the turn. And I think this might be Damar's last draw step. Abbott of Carroll Keep isn't the worst thing I've ever seen. We'll get to see the top card. It's a Zergo. All right. And that is going to do it. So Jerry Thompson going to win this match over Brian Damar's. Two games to one. Five color, bring the light. Able to get the job done after sideboard over a Tarka Red. We had a feeling the draws the game one would be bad for Thompson. Didn't love the matchup there. And DeMars was in a good spot game three being on the play. But his hand just did not cooperate. And Thompson able to get the win and move on to nine and one. And Duress, Radiant Flames, and Encase and Ice were all critical players for Thompson in the post-board game. So, uh, you know, Jerry definitely is constructing a full 75 here. Acknowledged that his matchup against Mono Red and Tarka Red was not very good. Addressed it with at least seven cards. It's possible other cards came in here as well and was able to shore it up. And uh, game two especially was one where Thompson needed every ounce of his sideboard to come into play.